good shot. Are you going to tell me what you want or not? <laughs> no, I, I'd like to have a beer. John. Maybe you ought to just bring me what you think I ought to have. I can't do that until you let go. Looks like you got it pretty bad. The worst. Two beers, Sam. Seems even longer now. I'm working. Please get out of my place. Polly. Now, I came here ready to forgive you. Don't make me change my mind. Let go of me. You know him, Joe? No, I've never seen him before. What's going on here? Nothing, Johnny. Honest. You heard, cowboy. You go get lost someplace. I'll see you later, Johnny. Don't count on it. Now, you leave go of her. friend is just a little bit yellow. Joe, did you see these new boots? They're fancy enough to dance all by themselves. You trying to barbecue us, Joe? Stop working that fire. No, I'm sorry, Pastor. You wish you'd put that whole incident right out of your mind. It's not that easy. Johnny and I have been friends since school. I have to watch him be humiliated like that. Would you feel better if he was dead? Because that's what he'd be if he'd gone for that gun. 
Well, the way he feels now, I bet he wished that's what had happened. He'll get over it. How would you know? You've never been afraid of anything in your whole life. Well, that ain't true, Jerry. No. I think he... he handled it absolutely correctly. A civilized man oughtn't to settle the differences with guns, especially in a crowded saloon. Like, now, how do you think Johnny would have felt if he'd gone through with the fight and some innocent bystander had been killed? And if I can only make Johnny see it that way. I know him too well, Pop. All he feels right now is that he turned yellow, not only in front of the whole town, but in front of his girl. A little late for social call. You'd like a cup of fresh coffee. I'll make some. Good idea. Well. How you feeling, John? Not too poorly, Joe. I know you feel. I wish there was something I could do. I want to thank you kindly for asking me in here and treating me just the same as always. Well, Johnny, you... You're the same young fellow you, you always were. You're our friend. Well, you better not go saying that around town, not after what happened today. Oh, come on, now you're talking silly. Anybody that was your friend yesterday is your friend today. Little Joe, I carry this thing for well, the same reason that most car hands do, I guess, but you know, shooting snakes, coyotes, signaling. But I don't know how to use it for anything else. Well, John, just because you never used a gun to shoot at a human being, well, that's nothing to be ashamed of. Well, that's not it. I'm glad I never shot at anybody. I never will if I can help it. But I don't even know how to handle a gun. Joe, will you learn me how? Well, look, John, I... There's no one else I can ask. Well, John, you just said that you wouldn't shoot at a human being if you could help it. And now, in the same breath, you're asking little Joe to teach you how to do just that. I appreciate what you're saying, Mr. Cartwright. And why? But that's not my meaning. If I could just know inside myself that I didn't have to be afraid, well, then I wouldn't be. It's either that or leave. Oh, Johnny, what are you saying? This is your home. Your girl is here. I know that. John. I've known you since we were just a little gaffer. You Paul and me, we were real good friends. And because of that, I, I feel a certain responsibility. And I agree that you should not be afraid. You should know how to handle yourself. But I'm not sure that Learning how to handle a gun is, is going to give you the answer you're looking for. But little Joe wouldn't have crawled out of that place like I did today. I wouldn't be so sure of that, Johnny. No, you can't be too sure of that. <laughs> Not even the men who've been in that situation many times could be sure of that. I appreciate what you're trying to say, Mr. Cartwright, but you may both know better than that. Now, I've seen Joe shoot and draw. He's real good with a gun. Who learned you, Joe? And my pa and my brothers. You know my pa died when I was ten years old. Joe, you're the closest thing I got to a brother. All right, I'll... I'll help you any way you want me to. Thank you, little Joe. You won't be sorry, I promise that. You 
you see, Joe? Yeah, let's uh, try it one more time. Hey, hey, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me see this thing. I don't believe it. How long has it been since you cleaned this? A couple months ago, I guess. Oh, just a couple of months? Look, put it away. And don't use it again until you clean it. You got rust on there from last winter. That thing isn't good for anything except cracking walnuts. Okay, Joe. And these bullets, when did you get these? Oh, uh... I imagine you got them about the same time you got the gun. I'm surprised they fired at all. Get rid of them and get new ones. You were serious when you said you didn't know anything about guns. I sure was. How about shooting? And one of the first things my pa ever said to me was, make sure the first shot counts, because you may not get another one. Yeah, in other words, don't miss, or the other guy will kill you. Look, I want you to stop thinking of your gun in just those terms. My pa was talking about shooting animals, not men. Something like a, a mountain lion or a wounded bear. You're right, Joe. I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's important to be relaxed. After you've been practicing for a while and you get used to the gun, that's just going to come natural to you, so don't worry about it. And take your time. In the beginning, don't rush it. Stay relaxed. You see what I mean? After we've been practicing for a while, I'll show you how to fire if you're in a hurry. You don't always have to bring the gun up to eye level. You can shoot from the hip. <laughs> and don't jerk the trigger. Squeeze it. Squeeze it slow and easy. Okay, let's get started. Just relax. See you doing some chores around. Well, thank you. <laughs> hey, you didn't have to. Uh, you didn't have to see Olive while you're in town, did you? No, no. I understand she's working nights now. Yeah. Hey, what, what about that character that was hanging around her, that uh, Al Mooney? Oh, he's uh, he's still around, still playing poker and still winning most of the time. I understand too. You know, Joe, I, I don't think that he's planning to leave. Well, it's a free country. Hey, uh, how's your pupil getting along? All right. I hope he's getting the idea that uh, learning how to handle a gun with skill also carries a certain responsibility with it. Oh, yeah, I think he understands. There hasn't been a day past I haven't mentioned it to him. Mm -hmm. I know he understands it. Well, I hope so. I know you understand because I believe I had something to do with convincing you. You know, there's quite a difference between hearing something from someone your own age, or hearing that same thing from, well, your father. Oh, you're not saying now that I shouldn't have helped Johnny learn how to use the gun? Oh, no, no, of course not. I'm glad you're teaching him. He was pretty determined to learn, anyhow, and I'd, well, I'd prefer that be you teaching him than someone, well, someone with a different set of values. more like it. 
Well, you know, you learn pretty fast, Johnny. That's because I got me a good teacher, Joe. Now, how about that fast draw? When are you going to show me your secrets? Uh, there aren't any. Oh, come on, Joe. No, look, I'm telling you the truth. Drawing is just like shooting. It's a matter of practice and familiarity, and that's all. Of course, good reflexes help, but you got those. We're not as good as yours. We got the same reflexes. All I got's the practice. Show me one more time, Joe. All right. Ready? Ready. Now! I want to do just the same as you do, but you do it so fast, I don't even see it. How do you start, Joe? Slow. Just start slow, just like the shoot. And, uh... I want you to start with these, just in case. Blanks, but what for? I'm the teacher. Just do what I tell you, all right? Now, don't try to be like lightning the first time. Take it slow. That's the important thing. Just get the move. Get it smooth. And face the target. I'll teach you to turn around later. All right, you ready? Yeah. Now! You see why the blanks? <laughs> How you been, Joe? How about give you up? Didn't think you'd come back here at all. Well, I had a bunch of chores pile up on me before I knew it. You practicing without me? Well, a couple hours every day. Good, that's what I like to hear. Graduated from those blanks a long time ago. You, uh, still got all your toes? <laughs> sure. But for some reason, I, I favor these tin cans, them plain rocks. Start me off, huh, Joe? All right. You ready? Yep. Now. Well, I guess you've been practicing without me. <laughs> well, Johnny, that's good. You know, that's as good as I've ever seen. You mean it, Joe? I, bet I mean it, every word of it. I'm gonna get back to my chores, boy. You don't need me anymore. <laughs> Take care. I'm awful grateful, Joe. I don't rightly know how to thank you. Yeah, well, the best way to thank me is to stay out of trouble. And only use that the way you promised. Just in self-protection. That's exactly my intentions, Joe. Believe me. I do. I, uh... I suppose you'll be going into Virginia City. Oh, so. I'm not afraid now, thanks to you. Well, I just hope you. Give my best to Olive, will you? Proud to.
How you been, honey? Good to see you. Johnny, Johnny, please, I... That's pretty stupid of you to come back here, cowboy. No, I didn't come in here to make trouble, Mr. Mooney. Truly, I didn't. I just come to see my girl. You're a liar. And she's not your girl. Al, leave him alone, Johnny. Please go. Give me a beer, Sam. Sure. Mr. Mooney, I'll overlook the insult this time. I expect you're upset about something. I don't want to shoot anything. So if you'll just pick up your winnings and walk out that door, I won't have to hurt you. Cowboy, you leave me no choice. I'm going to have to bury you right now. Now, you've got a choice, Mr. Mooney. You can walk out that door, as I suggested, because there's no need for us all to... All right, all right. You can keep that mouth of yours shut long enough to get your hand on your gun. That is, if you got the nerve. After you. After you. Tin horn. for that man's death. Pa, who else am I going to blame? I taught Johnny how to use that gun. I do. You don't know what happened, do you? You don't know whether it was self-defense. You don't if know... If it wasn't self-defense, Pa, then I shot and killed that man just as if I'd pulled the trigger myself. Why? Because you taught him how to draw a gun? I suppose you taught a man how to ride a horse and three weeks later he fell off that horse and broke his neck. Would that be your fault, too? Pa, that's not the same thing. Some help. Let's go after him. That's what I was thinking. Don't worry, Paul. We'll take care of him. Yeah. So help me, Joe. He really tried to avoid it. He even called him Mr. Mooney and said he didn't want to hurt him. You sure of that, Sam? It was Mooney insisted on a fight. And even then, even then Johnny wouldn't draw first. You'd have been proud of him, Joe. Especially you. Yeah, why especially me? You're the one taught him all he knows, aren't you? Yeah, I guess I am. Who is it, please? Joe Cartwright. Sorry to bother you, Al. I was looking for Johnny. He's not here, Joe. Oh, are you expecting him at all? What do you want him for? Oh, I just wanted to talk to him. Haven't you talked to him enough? Taught him enough? He wouldn't have killed anyone if you hadn't taught him how. Now, will you please leave him alone? Yeah, I, 
guess you're right. Joe, I'm sorry. Come in. Glad to see you. Is little Joe with you? Not at the moment. Uh, he's going to be sorry he missed you, John. Hey, uh, I'll buy you a beer. Oh, well, I'm just about to go over to see Olive a couple minutes before she goes to work. Now, when have you ever heard Hoss here offer to buy anybody a drink? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you kindly. I'd be proud to accept. Come on. I was in love with Al Mooney once until I found out what he was, and I ran away. I'd heard he was in jail for a while, and I prayed they'd keep him there. But he swore he'd find me, and he did. Because he figured if he couldn't have you, no one else could either. I knew if he came to Virginia City, someone would get killed, Johnny, if he tried to see me. I was hoping I could stop it in some way. But then Johnny did come to see me, and it's Al that's dead. You still love Johnny, don't you, Olive? Why shouldn't I? He's the only decent man that ever talked marriage to me. So he killed a rat like Al Mooney. That's not going to change him. Yeah, I know that. Though at first, when I heard about it, I wasn't so sure. I was sorry I ever taught him to use that gun. Joe, you shouldn't feel that. He would have learned from... I know, from... I know. He would have learned from somebody else. Also that he tried to avoid the gunfight as long as he could. That's true, Joe. He did. Yes? Ollie, it's me. <laughs> Hi, honey. Hi, John. How you doing, little Joe? Adam Huss, won't you come in? No, thank you, ma'am. We just came by to pick up little Joe on the way home. Thanks. Johnny, uh, Joe came here looking for you. Well, I'm glad you come, Joe. I was going to ride out to see you. I wanted to explain everything. Thought maybe you might have heard things wrong. Yeah, well, I heard everything right, finally. Olive told me what happened, so the bartender. You didn't think I rode in town and picked that fight deliberate, did you, Joe? To be honest, that's exactly what I thought at first. I'm glad I was wrong. <laughs> there wasn't nothing else I could do. I had to see Ollie. That or... I'm afraid anymore, thanks to you, Joe. I understand. And listen, good luck to both of you. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> oh, thanks, Hoss. Adam? And thanks for your hospitality. Pleasure, John. Mm. Mm. I come to town just as soon as I get the time off. Do you realize I never knew how many friends I had? And I mean, these good friends. Wasn't a person I ran into who didn't have something nice to say to me. Oh, I'm so glad, Johnny. And listen. You know my boss, Mr. Wilkins. Well, he said it's all right if I put up that cabin on that creek property. Well, that means we can get married as soon as I get enough put away. Johnny, I can save, too. Well, honey, I don't like you working in that saloon. Well, it, it won't be for long. I promise you that. And nobody's going to be bothering you. Not now. I guarantee that. Why'd you two follow me? Well, the mood you were in. Well, why don't you just mind your own business? <coughs> now, you listen to me, little Now, you boy. listen to me. Howdy, boys. Looking for Johnny Chapman. You seen him? 
He's upstairs with Olive. Oh? He's not in trouble over the Mooney killing, is he, right? Well, I wouldn't quite say that. In fact, just the opposite. Al Mooney that he killed was wanted in Colorado. It seems that him and some others broke jail and on the way out to kill a guard. So Mooney was a killer. That's right. Listen, well, let me go up and tell Johnny myself. Right? All right, Joe, and tell him that he's got $2,000 in reward money coming, will you? Yeah, I'll tell him. I've got to go to work, Johnny. All right. You uh, change your clothes. I'll meet you over at the saloon. We'll have some supper. Well, well, Joe, you forget something? No, I just had some news for you. What about? Al Mooney was wanted for killing a guard in a jailbreak, according to Sheriff Coffey. You mean I did the law a favor killing him? By the way, there was also a $2,000 reward on his head. $2,000? That's right. You mean I get $2,000 for killing him? Did you hear that, Olive? $2,000. Now I can start thinking about my own ranch. And we don't have to wait to get married. <laughs> How about that, little Joe? $2,000, that's more money in two seconds than I've made in the last two years. And just by pulling the trigger. I got some news. Not too good. Johnny Chapman quit his job and left town. Is that all? No. I was asked the sheriff to deputize him. Of course, Roy wouldn't do it. Well, Johnny won't with a badge. He uh, figures it'll help him in his new line of work. It's going to be a bounty hunter. Placerville. Looks like he's keeping real busy making money. Yes, he said we wanted to start our marriage off right with a place of our own and everything. Oh, I know what everybody's saying, that he's turned bounty hunter. And I know what that means. But it doesn't mean that he's going to have to use his gun all the time, does it? No, not necessarily. Johnny wouldn't shoot anyone unless he absolutely had to. We both know that. The bounty, the reward that's offered for wanted men. It's not always dead or alive, is it? Well, the reward is always more for a man who's wanted dead or alive. If you're gonna hunt, I guess it doesn't pay to hunt any other kind. Johnny wouldn't. I know he wouldn't. Look, Olive, we were wrong about him. Sheriff Coffey just got word from Placerville. Johnny was out after another wanted man. The reward was $800. And Johnny killed him. Local boy grows richer. Word has reached us from Stockton, California, that Virginia City's own Johnny Chapman is on his way to becoming our first famous bounty hunter. Young John, according to the Stockton Sun, last week disposed of his fifth, or is it his sixth, fugitive and collected a tidy $1,500 for him. While other frontier towns of America are busy producing presidents and senators, we can at least point with pride to John Chapman, dealer in death and human misery. Olive! 
Bob, open it up. Go ahead, open it. Yeah, she's still alive. Stay with her, I'll get the doctor. I don't need any more lectures, Joe. You sure of that? I'm sure. The doctor says I'm very lucky. If it hadn't been for you, the poison might have worked. Well, I'm glad I got here in time. What made you come? I was worried about you. That article in the paper about Johnny. He's not worth it, Olive. I know that. Well, then why? The only decent man that ever wanted to marry me. And he turns into a killer like Al Mooney. Olive, he's not worth dying for. He's not worth living for, either. You're just gonna have to learn to live without him. I hope I can. Oh, sure you can. You wait and see. An awful lot of things in this world worth living for besides Johnny Chapman. Sam. Fine. Be a cold? Sure is. Sure. Where's Olive? I asked you a question, Sam. Where's Olive? Ask somebody else. Like me, for instance? Johnny? my girlfriend. Son, she ain't your friend anymore. Neither is anybody else in this town. So if I was you, I'd just ride on out and never come back. I respect, bro, you, you're might envious because I'm doing your job and getting paid a whole lot more for it. You shouldn't have said that. You know that. My job is to protect the people of this town, not to go around killing men at so much ahead. But you wouldn't understand that, would you? So go on, do like I tell you. Not till I see Olive. You got no law that can make me leave till I do. All right, she's out to Ponderosa. Ponderosa? Little Joe? My friend. I thank you kindly for the information. I surely do. you glad to see me? No, I'm not. You're just another Al Mooney. Now let go of me. Now, wait a minute. I've been out trying to make us some money. What have you been doing? Two-timing me with Joe Cartwright? <laughs> no 
And where do you want him killed? Here? In town? Or on the road? such good care of Olive for me, Johnny. Olive, you're quite sure you want to leave town with him, huh? Yes, I'm sure. Thank you, Sheriff. You truly do have a suspicious nature, Roy. Olive, uh, honey, we got a couple hours before the stage leaves. I'll go to the saloon and have a beer or two. Roy? So long as you're on that stage. Just get in the way. Stage left yet? Joe! How you been, little Joe? Where's Olive? Well, now you just time to say goodbye. We're gonna be leaving a little bit. Not until after I talk to Olive. Uh, Joe, uh, she's in love with me. Think you better just stay away from her. Uh, she's in love with what you used to be, John, not what you are now. Where are you going? I told you before, I'm going to talk to Olive. Joe, don't you go doing anything you're going to be sorry for. It's too late. There's too many things I'm sorry for already where you're concerned. Mainly what I wasn't able to teach you. You taught me all I needed to know. Now, I taught you a skill, that's all. You taught yourself to be a paid killer. Well, why don't we just stop talking and uh, you go for your gun, huh? Well, go for it. I seem to remember somebody saying that to you once. And he's dead now, Johnny. The same as you're going to be when you meet a faster gun. You want to try me, Joe? What's your excuse going to be? There's no bounty on my head. Tell me something, John. How many of those men that you killed could you have brought in alive? You're afraid of me, little Joe. <laughs> No. No, I'm sorry for you. Real, real sorry. Don't you turn away from me, Cartwright! <laughs> for not killing him, little Joe. I didn't have to. He did that to himself a long time ago. Nothing. 
I'm going to take that stage when it comes in, Johnny. You can too. Maybe together we can put the pieces back again. <laughs>